A good morning and welcome to Everyday Money Matters on Lagos Talks 91.3 FM. Uh, my name is Adu and it's the day that we get to talk about money matters. And this is the first or the second edition in the year. Yes, second edition in the year. And it's been awesome looking at what 2021 has in store for every one of us. And uh, of course, as always, I'm joined by the money team today. And I'll start my introductions with the finance man himself, talking about none other than old Olumide, Olumide, good morning to you. Hi, good morning, Adu. It's good to hear you once again. Good yeah, to hear and see That's you. Nice. Uh, okay, and of course, the money lady too is in the building, uh, Loretta. Hello, Loretta. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be here. This is the first time I'm seeing you this year, by the way. Yeah, I couldn't make you last week. Can you imagine? Well, I'm back. Not- I've not seen you for a whole year, <laughs> since, since 2020. Come on, Loretta, it's not good. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway, also somewhere in the building too is Ugo Dre. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me, but Ugo Dre too is in the building, the money man himself. So we'll just get straight into it. Yes, and- Mr. Adu, how are you doing? Oh, oh okay. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I was just teasing Loretta that uh, I haven't seen you guys since last year. Just only day that I've seen. We've been holidaying. We've been holidaying. We needed <laughs> rest. We had to rest after a very tough 2020. So we had I to know. rest. <laughs> All right. Good I'm to have you here. Back. Yes, good to be here. All right, let's just get straight into the conversation for today. And let me just remind you, our dear listener, that you can uh, participate in all that will be done here today. And you can do that by sending us a message on our WhatsApp platform or on Twitter. WhatsApp is at uh, 08092345913. And also you can join us on Twitter uh, on Lagos Talks 913. So we'll, we'll get talking there. All right, uh, let's get into the questions for today. Quite a lot of them, as people are obviously getting ready for a new year, trying to make um, money decisions and know exactly what it is that they need to do. Okay, so uh, let's start from one of the things that is supposed to come with this new year, which is the African Free Trade or Continental Free Trade Agre- Agreement. That's the ACFTA. Uh, somebody is asking here, and uh, the question is, uh, good morning, excuse me, good morning, Naira Metrics. Please, I need an indication on the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, ACFTA, AF. CFTA, beg your pardon. Uh, the questions are, is it being implemented? Question two, is it, uh, are there any specific lead countries? Uh, and three, what is the scope, such as timelines, tariffs, uh, tariffs regimes, if any changes, range of products or commodities that are covered in this agreement, uh, says um, pretty much available information that are relating to the AFCFTA is what this person is pretty much asking for. So more or less like an overview of that trade agreement. So hmm. that is a very interesting question. Yes, it is. Oh, you must be a, a, a solid businessman or an exporter. Yeah. Going back to the question. <laughs> anyway, um, Adu, if you can hear me, um, the so the, the agreement, the AFCFTA is basically official um, January 1 this year, but uh, I do understand that there are still a few I's to be dotted and T's to be crossed before um, you can see fully uh, come into um, operation. So I think uh, you gotta be patient. I also understand that about 90% of all the, you know, uh, I think, yeah, about 90% of all the provisions and all the things that need to be signed and done is basically done. I think the balance will be done by uh, mid this year. So um, the, 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 the market is officially open. So I want to believe that a lot of all the, all the you know, duties that you don't need to pay are effective starting January. Uh, but we haven't actually seen, I haven't seen any report yet. Uh, on this, and uh, I think it's something that the story and our metrics would work and, and try to find out, um, you know, whether it's now, you know, being fully implemented. Uh, we're, we're starting a blog soon called um, AFCFT Watch, where we're going to be tracking every single thing that's happening on, on a regular basis. So uh, stay tuned to that, and perhaps you would uh, get more information as time goes on. But we would also continue to update you on the show. Adam. 
All right, thank you, Ugo Dre. So um, that's for the person, I think the person left his name though, it says his name's Ibrahim. All right, so let's get into some stock questions. This one is uh, from Anonymous. It says, which stock broker will you recommend for a foreign investing, sorry, for a foreigner investing in Nigeria? Hmm. Um, where should I take that? Um, I think um, one of the narratives uh, the person should look at is that since it's coming from that kind of um, toxicated environment, um, and uh, I, I, believe, I want to believe he has um, appreciable earnings, you can look at the uh, top tier investment banks. Um, we have um, Cardinal Stone, um, we have no. um, uh, we have um, well, 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 we don't call names every day. <laughs> Yeah. Or else, yeah, I'm we just going to charge you. Investment banks, you know. And the reason I give such examples are because um, I want um, listeners to understand that um, we have uh, quite good brands in Nigeria that are heavily regulated and have very good financial advisory team. And that said, um, there are platforms that are one of the best, um, uh, have one of the best user interface um, platforms on, on board. So um, going on those kind of um, um, assets, you are going to get good services. So you can look at those I mentioned, and there are quite many. Uh, just go to the SEC uh, uh, website, you see the list of regulated uh, investment banks. Okay, thank just, you. Just to, just to add a bit, Adu. Um, so there, just like you said, there are a lot of um, you know brokerage firms that you can use. Uh, there are also some that are all, a lot of them also have online um, applications. So. You don't actually have to be in Nigeria to, you know, to maybe trade um, stocks or any, um, you know, investments. Right. Uh, you can just go to, um, you know, your app store and then just download, you know, uh, some of their apps. Uh, like Olimide said, you, you get those guys on the Nigerian Stock Exchange as well as on SEC website. You see a list of them. Uh, and of course, look out for, you know, our website. We do. Um, rank some of these guys as well on a regular basis, and then you would see some that uh, that we can recommend. But we're not going to mention names on the show. Um, that's not what we do here, at least for now. I do. Yeah, I was going to send Olumide an invoice, but thank you for <laughs> thank you for weighing in. Okay, um, so still in the same terrain, I think I'm just going to um, take questions that are sort of related to this terrain. So uh, we can, you know, kind of move away from the stock market and uh, that particular conversation, but quite a number of them are here. So I'm just going to loop one or two of them together. Okay, so here's another person asking. Uh, Hello, good day. I have funds in dollars and will be interested in knowing any bank plans I could engage to invest the dollars at this point in time. That's one question. And then I'll loop it up with another one, which says, um, I have, good morning, please. I, I really need advice. I have about 300,000 Naira at hand. What business or investment would you advise I go into, please? So the first person says, um, has dollars and will be interested in knowing any bank plans could engage in to invest the dollars at this point in time. The second person is saying, um, I have about 300,000 Naira at hand. What business or investment would you advise I go into, please? So they're kind of related. So um, right, okay. answer one or two. Uh, yes. So the person that's trying to invest in dollars, um, I would say that there are, I mean, there's so many, there's so many securities, there's so many assets, and there are so many fund managers we have in Nigeria that you could, you know, invest. I could invest your dollars for you. Now, Olimide might explain this better since it's um, foreign investment, but I would say that um, depending on what your objective is for, you know, in the investment, that you find a fund manager that can meet this objective. So, if it is um, to invest in riskier assets like cryptocurrencies and the likes. I would say find a fund manager or any um, investment firm that would be willing to make, you know, at least offer advisory services for you to be able to make those investments mm -hmm. or make those investments. For the ones who are regulated to do so, they can make such investments for you um, also in dollars from here. 
Um, but yeah, let me jump straight to the person that's asking. Um, he said he had 300,000 there and he's looking for a business to start. I mean, there are so many businesses. And I would say, particularly in a period like this, you should, first of all, invest in the areas of value, you know, areas where, um, areas that are, that are set to thrive in 2021, you know, as plain as sounds. So find out what you think the market wants, you know, the areas, the markets, um, the, the things people want right now, you know, um, times are changing, what, even if it's at, even if it's a small business, you just need to be positioned for the opportunities that are available right now. So do a little bit of research, find out what, you know, people need, is it delivery services? I don't know how much delivery services cost, you know, but, Aside it being within your area of competence, it also needs to be um, in an area of value for the future of work and you know, for mm. the space we're in right now. So yeah, that, that should do it. All righty, thank you, Laura. Right. Just to add up, tell us, yeah. Just to add up what Loretta uh, said, um, I want the uh, the person that spoke about that the fixed amount three hundred thousand dollars to invest in um, foreign investments. I think. Um, the person needs to understand that um, when you convert that rate to um, dollar terms, um, it's less than a thousand dollars. And right now, um, your investment uh, opportunities become limited. How big it may be, I think uh, your best investment is um, immense value, and that's um, improving your intellectual skills and so much more. And if you look at the trend of 2020, a lot of earnings came from that um, environment. Those that um, improve themselves remotely, uh, those that um, learned. Um, intellectual skills and those that um, had their value chain to their businesses had a better return than those businesses that uh, remain status quo. So I think um, coming on board, uh, 2021 will still remain um, the same as um, 2020 because um, the COVID-19 uh, case loads are still um, going at an alarming rate and um, the virus, uh, the um, COVID-19 um, vaccines have not yet um, tamed, caught that um, menace. So we expect people to invest more in value chain um, opportunities. Um, number one is education. You can just go to um, so many online sites like Coursera, Udemy, uh, just to uh, acquire uh, skills on how to be productive. And um, I did a recent uh, uh, research and I found out that a lot of people that um, end so much in this value chain are from, are, are from the South South in Nigeria. If you look at the crypto industry, for example, in Nigeria, most of those, uh, those that are doing so well are in the South South. And these are guys that are not bankers. They're, they're just using the service, the value chain. So you can either be an authenticator, you can be a learner, you can be uh, a financial and a crypto analyst. You can be, there's so many things you can do in, in that ecosystem. So I, I, I want this class to understand that investment is not just putting cash uh, into a broker or into the bank for use. Investing in education is even higher than um, uh, higher than making such investment. You remember, Abatist said, imagination is higher than knowledge. So if you have that kind of um, bias, uh, the odds for you will be high this year. Thank you. Okay, so yeah. you are you are walking assets invariably. Uh, yeah. so the more you more you add to yourself, the more you yeah. are going to earn. All right. Um, so I think that about covers a lot of the investment questions. So I'll take one. Now this one is a funding question. This person says the, they need advice, and they say, "How best can I get a loan of two million naira for a business to set up?" Uh, the person says, I'm an employed fashion designer and I earn up to 200,000 Naira monthly. So the person needs uh, funding, 2 million Naira, a loan to, for business set up, a fashion designer with the earnings of 200,000 Naira monthly. Godre, you want to talk about that? Yeah, um, there, there are a number of places you can go to. Um, you can, you know, if you're, 2 million Naira means squarely puts you under the uh, MSME category. That means small and um, micro and small business category. So you can um, attempt to go to places like the, um, you know, um, Bank of Industry. You can also try uh, the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. Uh, they do give loans to small businesses as well. So maybe that's one option you want to try too. Um, um, now, if it's a very short term loan you're looking for, maybe something you plan to return in a month or you know less than maybe two months, 
right? Very short term. Then you can try microfinance banks. Uh, they also give, you know, quick loans. So that's basically where you can get, you know, that kind of loan. And if you don't want to pay too much interest, then maybe, you know, talk to friends and family. Uh, two million is within the range of, you know, friends and family, uh, what friends and family can provide. But, you know, basically these are the range of um, um, loans, like, you know, places that you can get loans like that for. Awesome. Yes, with that, sorry. Um, I feel okay. there, I feel for a two millionaire loan, you probably do not need to be stressing yourself going to the bank. Um, like um, Gudre already said, there are traditional ways, you know, friends and family, but there are things as simple as just um, a job, monthly a job, where people, you can set aside 100K every month, and then after a couple of months, you receive your full amount without any interest, you, know, you get a lump sum of your, based on your own savings, and then you can build up from there. So explore the, you know, the easier ways, the ways that probably do not require um, paying interest, you know, since it's small, so you don't get locked along the way. Yeah. And the creditor man doesn't come knocking on your door every day. Then <laughs> carry your sewing equipment. Sewing equipment. All right, let's move over now to some of the questions that are, um, shall I say, uh, miscellaneous before we get into cryptocurrency. This one is coming from uh, Tessie. Tessie says, good morning, Adu. Says, please, I heard of land banking investment. Question is, how real is it? And what are the percentages? Land banking investment. I haven't heard of that. Um, Godre, is there anything like that? Neither have I heard of it, but Olibide, is this something that you heard about? Oh, Loretta, I don't think I've heard about land banking. Yeah, I've heard before. Um, it's a type of investment from what I can see here, um, but we definitely need to do research into that first. Okay, definitely. all right, no, no problem then. Um, yeah, this but... is a question if, that's yeah, fine. But... We yeah, can always yeah. answer the person next week. I'm sure I'm yeah. sure the person can, can get more detail or just check Naira metrics to find more detail. Um, this other person here is, um, Asking another miscellaneous question. This is about fintechs. It says, good morning. These new fintechs companies that offer stock investment. The question is, are they regulated by the SEC? Um, the person is saying, I understand SEC had some issues with some of them last year. So what are your thoughts? Is it safe, pretty much? I guess that's what the person is asking for fintech companies offering stock investment. Okay, yeah, that's another very good question. Um, one of the... Um, Case, um, cases I usually um, try to solve is um, uh, regulatory issues in regards to uh, fintechs um, coming to this um, investment mm -hmm. system. You need to understand that um, they are pretty new and fintech is new in Nigeria. And you know, running regulatory processes can be a bit cumbersome. But how it may be, regulatory uh, agencies are very key in the financial industry. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Presently, from my research, um, we almost have none that has a direct relationship with the Security Exchange Commission um, okay. in terms of approval. And so some of them have partnership with regulatory uh, firms. Like, wow. uh, for example, um, I won't want to mention it, but there's a fast rising uh, uh, fintech app that has a relationship with a regulated investment bank. So that still covers, uh, that still covers some kind of regulatory oversight. So one of the things that I tell uh, readers to uh, listeners to to do is you just go to the website, look at their about us page, try to see uh, those partners partner partner with them. At least almost all of them have a strong partner either with the local uh, re regulated investment bank or the foreign. So um, in spite of the fact that uh, they have uh, they don't have the full regulatory uh, license, some of them have. That partnership all right thank you yeah, just to that. just to add in i do um you know this is a very uh, good question and, and the question that you gotta be very careful about um how you answer it so um if, if i hear you right he wants to know if um you know there are fintech companies that offer stocks right mm -hmm. so if if stocks is what if what you mean is equity to into those fintech companies and whether they are regulated um, so, so there's no fintech company at the moment that is listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. There's not, not even one. Uh, there's none at the moment, right? However, you have you know several fintech companies that are regulated already mm -hmm. and operate in Nigeria. 
Uh, but those guys uh, operate as high-level startups and uh, they are usually venture-backed. Either they are backed by venture capital or backed by angel investor money. So uh, getting you know to invest in there, it's not as simple as maybe buying them on the, buying their equity or their shares on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Um, these are guys that are um, very close businesses, private, private business. And, and you don't need regulation to actually invest in those companies. Uh, what you probably need to know, like Golimini said, is whether they are regulated. And you, know, you can always you know, verify these things. Uh, their household names are regulated. Uh, of course, there are still several of them that are not regulated at all, but operate as FinTech. So that's what you gotta be wary about. Um, you know, whether, you, you know, whether they have the license to operate or to trade in, in their areas. Mm. Uh, and that, that's it really. So are there fintechs that have shares in listed on Nigerian Stock Exchange? No, not that I'm aware of. Uh, but are there fintech companies that you can invest in that are regulated? Several of them. I do. All right. Thank you very much, Godre, for sharing that with us. And uh, now we're going to crypto away. Uh, <laughs> I know this is Olumi Day's forte. Uh, so we'll just go into the crypto questions because I think that's about the one or two or three left for us to tackle from the one I have right here. Uh, people have sent in. And just in case you still want to catch up with the train, you can send in yours to us on WhatsApp 0809 234 Five nine one three. Okay, so let's start from this one. Who's asking for information? Says, uh, "Good morning. I got a notification from you uh, on a site for trading crypto. I think maybe saw it on Nairometrics.com. I guess it says they offered large leverage, and it says, please, I need a link to that as I have searched your entire website, but I can't seem to find it. So this one is asking for some info." I, it says, I got a notification on a site for trading crypto. They offered large leverage. It says, I need a link as I have searched your entire site, but can't find it. Yes. So um, I, 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 doubt, uh, I doubt if that's not metrics because um, one of the things um, not metrics um, um, imbibes is um, discipline and um, a lot of um, intellectual understanding when it comes to um, this kind of things. And when you mean leverage, you know, when you mean leverage, you are, you are trying to say increase your exposure to a certain asset. For example, if you are if you are using hundred dollars, if you want to use hundred dollars to control, uh, maybe a thousand dollars, and uh, though it looks very interesting, but it's a double-edged sword. You know, uh, imagine if it goes against you, you might be um, in depth of a thousand dollars. So uh, I don't think it's something I, I advise um, listeners or readers to go into. It's uh, leverage is usually used for sophisticated um, traders and investors like uh, you see in the advanced market. Uh, good doing leverage in the crypto market has cost a lot of people uh, money. Just um, some days ago, you could, you could see what happened on Sunday and Monday when Bitcoin lost about $10,000. Within eight hours, you know, about $1.9 billion was liquidated in, in, in those positions that over, uh, had uh, leverage positions. So. Um, as much as it's exciting to invest in the crypto market, I think um, leverage is something that I would not want to encourage a basic um, investor to do. All right, then. Okay, we have uh, one more crypto question here. This is uh, for another listener saying, what is the best cryptocurrency to invest in now? And is cryptocurrency here to stay? That's the question the person is asking. Yeah crypto, yeah, crypto is here to stay. Like um, the usual narrative is that um, crypto is an industry that is fast evolving. If you go, if you go around, there's not, there's hardly anything you don't see crypto in banking, agriculture, uh, fashion, um, even in the art industry. So crypto is here to stay. But um, in terms of best investment, um, uh, first of all, I would um, want the listener or reader to keep getting such updates on our metrics website because. Times are prevailing. A few months ago, I gave uh, top 10 uh, cryptos that are likely to do well. And if you had done research in November on such article, by now you should have been over at least 200% in returns because um, uh, the likes of Polkadot, um, Cardano, Monero, and Chainlink, um, Ethereum, they've overhead more than 100% at that point. And um, you know, Bitcoin right now is trending. But uh, the reason why Bitcoin is trending is that a lot of institutional investors are coming into the fray. And uh, as seems exciting as it may be, 
the recent volatility that occurred some days ago have shown the risk involved. In fact, um, just some days ago, uh, I shall call the authority, um, the strong regulator of um, the United Kingdom, issued warning against um, retail investors about the dangers of investing in crypto. So the crypto investment is not something you look at uh, 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 wholly. It's a part of the investment you put in something you are ready to lose. So uh, for now, uh, there are so many hot coins that are doing well apart from Bitcoin, um, like I mentioned. But the issue here is that they are very volatile, uh, meaning that they have a very, uh, there's high possibility of um, price swings. So uh, I advise you stick to the top 20 uh, market caps uh, cryptos. That's the crypto that have the highest liquidity. They look at that. Um, in terms of entry the market, uh, you either look at the price patterns or the fundamentals. And what are the fundamentals? The fundamentals are the white paper, the things back in those crypto assets. You look at how viable they are, um, what is backing them, who are people behind the team. My favorite right now is Polkadot because uh, uh, Polkadot has a strong white paper and I understand it's based on the Ethereum network. And um, the founder uh, uh, was previously in the Ethereum um, foundation. So and, and just um, six months has doubled in price and it's still looking very cheap. It's less than uh, $10. Uh, and I, I see it um, as the next big thing. All right. Well, let me All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, well, there are I do, some... I do, I do. Just to chip in, though, um, I, I think that, uh, you know, recently we had this Naira Metrics um, outlook for 2020 and uh, cryptocurrency, you know, according to from what we um, basically are forecasting, it will be very dominant this year. Um, you know, you're going to see um, cryptocurrency come mainstream uh, fully, but it will remain volatile. So we got to be careful. The prices, you know, can go up or down massively within two, three days. Uh, I personally, that's me personally, think that the price will drop below 20K sometime this year. I might be wrong, but that's what I, I kind of believe. Um, so, you know, people want to be careful. Uh, but, you know, to his question, would crypto, is cryptocurrency here to stay? It is. It's not going anywhere. I, I think that some countries will start to adopt it as a form of legal tender. So that's going to happen this year, I do. So um, just, you know, start learning about it, reading up about cryptocurrency. That's why we'll cover it a lot in our metrics because we think that, uh, it's probably the way it to go when it comes to how money is going to be, um, um, you know, transferred or transacted uh, in the, in the next few years. Adi. All right, thank you, Godre. Thank you, Loretta, and thank you, Olumide. We have come to the point where we have to say uh, au revoir for this edition of Money Matters. I'm sure that by next week we'll get to see the whole team hopefully again on uh, Everyday Money Matters. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> So you have a wonderful day ahead and, and thanks for joining in.